Hi, welcome to the part 5 of DevOps Engineer Professional Certification Real Exam Questions. Please hit the subscribe button and click the like button. A lot of effort goes into preparing these questions and answers. A lot of analysis goes in. So let's look at this question, which of the following is not cloud formation pseudo parameter. So what are pseudo parameters? These are predefined and you cannot declare them in your templates. So let's look at first one, the stack name. So we can find this one here. It returns the name of the stack. Let's look at account ID. So it already exists account ID. It gives you the account ID of the account in which the stack is being created. Now let's look at stack ARN. See, I could not find the stack ARN here. So I could find no value. I could find partition. I could find region, stack ID, stack name, URL suffix. Okay. But I could not find this. So this is my answer. But let's also look at notification ARNs. So you see this. It has notification ARNs and it returns a list of notification errands for the current stack this is the json for it there is no logic to this this is the way it has been created the pseudo parameters let's look at the next one see the largest benefit is that you can have a blue deployment and you can also have a green deployment but let's look at the others the first one is immutable rolling deployments what is it so what it means is immutable means you cannot reverse so by uh, if you have already applied it then you will not if the update fails then the rollback process requires entire termination of the auto scaling group okay let's look at mutable rolling deployments See, as per me, the rolling deployment itself is the mutable one. Mutable means anything can update it. The rolling deployment is generally faster than a blue-green deployment. So, mutable rolling deployment is not the answer. If you look at blue-green deployments, so this is a deployment strategy in which you create two separate but identical environments. One environment is blue, is running the current application. And the other one that is green is, is running the new application canary deployments it is used to reduce the risk of deploying a new version okay the method will incrementally deploy the new version make it visible to new users in a slow fashion as you gain confidence in the deployment you will deploy it to replace the current version in its entirety so what it works is the way it works is you will do a small deployment people will start using it if they like it everything is going fine you do a, a full uh, deployment but with swap URLs, the main advantage is blue-green because we'll have two environments running in parallel. See, this is a very basic question, okay? It requires no brains at all. Why are snapshots or EBS volumes that are taken more often faster? See, you have one, uh, suppose a database and this is the backup you have taken. You have taken it once, that is round one. Now round 2 when you will take it, you will only take incremental. Round 3 when you will take it, you will only take incremental. So incremental, because you are taking it frequently, it will be faster because in the one go, the point 1, you did a full data migration. If there were there was 100 terabytes of data, you moved 100 terabytes. Hence on, in a daily basis, only 8 to 10 terabytes comes in so you are moving incremental that is 8 to 10 terabytes 8 terabyte is less than 100 terabytes that's why it is faster so wherever you see the word incremental that is our answer this is incremental because why so that only the blocks on the device that have changed after your last snapshot are saved into the new snapshot okay that is incremental See, the first thing they are explaining about allocation, phase, faster, this is crap, okay? That's option C. It is talking about pre-warmed by snapshotting and reading all blocks. That is also crap. Third is the drive is pre-warmed and every block on the device has already read at least one. This is crap. See, basically, it is all 
incremental that is why it is fast now if you see this question see basically this question says that you are trying to establish a ECS cluster and then you are getting the create stack operation error it says insufficient capabilities exception so out of these what is what is the issue okay so the first one says the user or the role attempting to execute cloud formation template doesn't have permission so it is not a permission issue when there is a permission issue you don't get this uh, this sort of error the problem here is insufficient capabilities means capabilities and capabilities this capability has to be given this capability underscore i am and capability underscore named underscore i am this is the answer if you see other options like d cloud formation is not capable of fulfilling the request of the specified requests uh, resources in the current region this is crap you will not get this error because of this region and b says that cloud formation service cannot be reached i mean there is a problem with the service itself is not capable of creating cluster which is crap okay so this is the documentation around capability im and named im you can read this pause this and read this this brings us to the end of this part please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button this brings us to the end of part 5 see you in the next part